Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 192, Digital Imaging with Photoshop for the spring semester of 2022. Um, today, we'll be continuing <clears throat> with the subject of digital painting, which is covered in Lesson 10. Um, what I want to start with <clears throat> is basically a review of what we covered on Monday, and it entails taking, <clears throat> excuse me, photograph which does not necessarily have to be high resolution which is nice and uh, using that photograph and working with it as if it's kind of a wet oil painting and then using a series of brushes that are that they've made available to us and you're also welcome to explore and experiment and create some of your own brushes but there are many many that are available already to us that should be sufficient to um, turn that highly detailed photograph into a more um, expressionistic kind of painting. Okay, so that's what we're working with. So this is part of the lesson in here. You can see that they've given us a nice landscape photograph. And they've also given us a series of brushes that we um, imported to help us to um, loosen up or kind of destroy the detail as it were. Um, if we look at the finished version of it, you can see that there are remnants of the branches and that sort of thing of the photograph. I would probably even decimate, uh, dis decimate some of that. But for a, for a large part, they have done a good job in decimating the digital detail that you see in a photograph in the sky and in the grass, in the middle ground, in the trees, and in the grass in the foreground. Okay, so this is the sort of thing that I think would be um, that I would welcome seeing from all of you. If you want to try something different, you're welcome to, um, but you don't have to. So the subject matter can again be a landscape. It can be a still life, much the same way that John Derry is approaching his. It can be a portrait. Um, again, you're going to work from a photograph. It can be one that you've downloaded from the internet. I think it would also probably behoove you to um, use your smartphone and take some of your own photographs and use those in the background. They don't have to be, again, high resolution. They can be low resolution and relatively small. They need to fit on an eight by 10, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Okay, that's all. Now, um, what I did want to show you is one that I've been working on. Okay, this is taken in Morro Bay, and it's a little, you know, from a, a section of the bay that's been trans, translated into a digital painting. Now, if I were to turn off the painting itself, you can see that the photograph is much sharper. It has much more detail and much crisper. Now, I could keep going with this. In fact, if I take this top layer and I increase the opacity even more, that's something that you can consider is that you'll notice that I've destroyed even more of the detail. And I probably want to bring some of the detail back in the mid, mid ground, middle ground. Okay, but um, expressionistic is the word to destroy the detail. And I have to agree with John Derry that if it's going to look like a photograph, then why not use a photograph? There are some paintings that are done that are very realistic, but they would not be, um, you would not confuse them for a photograph. They are somewhat, if not, um, extremely stylized in their approach to it. But I thought for our purposes, the approach that they've taken in the book um, to a very kind of expressionistic, loose approach to the painting would be a good approach. Um, as I mentioned on Monday, it's uh, I think uh, a worthwhile, for those of you who are art majors, um, it's a worthwhile um, for you to pursue this um, more in that you can use some of your own paintings and work on those digitally you can work on photographs digitally and what makes them so um useful or um 
enticing, at least for me, on a commercial art basis is that you can print them on canvas, stretch them on stretcher bars, and you can, um, you know, put them up for sale as limited series or maybe not. And they can go into motels, um, doctor's offices, uh, you know, other offices, office buildings and stuff. And while that may not be your, your principal interest or area you know, to pursue, um, it is a way of um, providing income for yourself. And that's something, you know, I do have a background that I worked almost 10 years as a commercial artist, and that becomes really important. Okay. And even as a, a fine artist for over 30 years now, um, my teaching is my way of, you know, making a living. So I don't need to worry if my artwork sells or not. Um, you know, otherwise, that's, you know, that's typically what artists have to do is they have to find uh, if their, their paintings aren't selling um, or their sculpture isn't selling to um, earn them a living, they have to find some other way. And if you can find something that's close to what you do, but not exactly the same, then that would be, um, I think, a worthwhile um, endeavor. So um, a couple more things. I want to show you again some examples from Pinterest, ones that I've saved for all of you. So this is on my you know, Pinterest page and under um, digital paintings. And again, that can be found, that link can be found at the bottom of my website. So um, yeah, let me see if I can't go back real quick. There we go. So I just went back a couple of steps. And this is my homepage on my website, kmart66.com. And if you look down at the bottom, um, I don't join or I've or part of many social networks anymore. But the one on Pinterest is the one that you would want to go to. Okay. And you'll see that I have a number of categories that I have saved. Um, some are, you know, involved some sunset photographs that I've taken. Architectural details, which are used oftentimes for my um, illustrator class, as well as urban sketches, um, different approaches to, to sketching um, images from life, but they could easily be turned into digital paintings as well. You might want to look at those. But I do have a category right here, just as I had a category for movie posters of digital paintings. So that's where, where I encourage you to look. Okay, and I've saved a number of them, um, mostly landscapes, um, some figure um, paintings, a couple, um, uh, one or two portraits. Still lifes would be good too, though. And that's why I'm going to show you John Derry's. So having said that, um, and these, I think, are, are a good representation of the kinds of images that I think would be suitable for our class. Okay. So here's a good one here of just a, a car on the street. It's very contemporary. It was clearly taken and used the photograph as a basis for their piece. Interiors are nice too. There's just a whole plethora of approaches that you can take. So having said that, I'm going to go back to, let's see, I'm going to go ahead to our image here from with John Derry. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the recording. Okay. And I will put this up just to remind everybody, let them know that they need to finish their um, uh, movie poster if they haven't. Make sure that you're up on lessons. We've just finished lesson 10. Um, next week, we'll be starting lesson nine or 11 and uh, probably do a little bit more on and then we'll have several um, videos that we'll watch on retouch and restore towards the end of the semester. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and pause. The recording. So um, there you have it. 
today. Um, watched John Deary um, create some of his digital paintings. And one of the things that I think you should also consider is something that he mentioned that for the iPhone, there are a number of um, apps available that turn photographs into digital paintings. There is, like as he mentioned, there's Glaze, there's Picasso, and a few others. Um, Waterlog will turn it into a watercolor. And sometimes you can get some pretty impressive results. Sometimes they just look horrible. They do look digital. They look like a filter has been applied. And they're not very interesting. But if you play with them long enough, um, I think you'll see some interesting results that you can maybe then go back in and paint on inside Photoshop. Um, so I encourage you to experiment, try that. There's also the neural filters available in Photoshop that are worth playing with. Um, all those things that are no longer just covered by chapter 10 um, in Photoshop. So um, work on your digital painting. You have plenty of time to um, experiment and to come up with something unique, creative, have fun. Hopefully you'll have fun with it. It's taking Photoshop in a very different direction. Um, it's not just a retouching tool. It can be used pretty expressively now. And um, so that's it for today, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pause the recording. And um, once again, and I will see all of you Monday. That's it, bye-bye.